Good evening, God bless you, or good morning, wherever you are. It is a fantastic day, and here we are still yet in the essence of rest. I pray you are just having a fantastic day, and I welcome you here to not only the ministry, but this series on this subject. It may feel as though we are still in it, and yes, I still have many more hours on the subject that we could just pick apart inch by inch by inch and just so much. However, we're just going to be here today, and that's it, and so let's get right to it. Father, tonight I thank you. In the name of Yeshua, for these words, may they be yours. May they encapsulate us, engulf us, and move us to a new time and place with you. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is here with us right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, going to need your word, as we always have it. And tonight I want to get into, last, last week's message was about things that rest affords you the ability to ignore. We can ignore propaganda. We can ignore all the pushing to eat breakfast. We can ignore toxic people and negativity. There's so much stuff that is always competing for our minds and our time and our spirits and our energy. And I will share this, whatever you give your mind and your energy to will either deplete you or will increase. So tonight we're going to get into what rest allows you to see. There's a difference when you move in different places. You know, it's kind of like this. If you walk into your garage and it's filled with crap, <laughs> you can't see a whole lot when it's all cleaned out you can see I could fit two cars in a motorhome in here who knew wow there's space you can see the walls you can see oh there's this there's that I can put this here 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 and there's space to work with that's what we're going to be looking at there's more within you that you have yet to be able to see because of everything else that is chipping away gnawing to take everything away from you we're saying no palmer worms canker worms locusts out 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 and out so rest can enter in and we can breathe doesn't matter how much chaos is in the world that's for the world but not for you oh no you are here honey You see this, just ignore it. Because this would be the one time when I'd pull it and the whole thing would come apart. So, we're going to be focusing on the greater thing. So the first thing I want to show you is this. Come with me to the book of Psalms in 119. 119 of Psalms. And in Psalms 119.37. Uh, Check this out. So rest you can see good and you can see God because God is good. When there's no rest, it's hard to see anything because like where God, where is anything good? The flowers are dead, the birds are dead, the kids are fat, the food is bad, the people are mean, the world is going to hell in a handbasket and blah, 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 right? But no, Psalm 119.37, turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. So if you're looking at the worthless things, well, that's your fault. He's given a command, turn or asking, or it's a request. Turn my eyes from the worthless things. I only want to be looking at what is worth something. He is worth all. Where are your eyes? And we can always look and, and see the little speck and then focus on the speck instead of the beauty of the thing. Well, look at that, look at that, look at that. Mm -mm. Because it will eat your lunch. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. So what are you looking at that's worthless? I will tell you this, and I don't know, any of you are tech people that watch this. If you were a tech person, and you've ever owned an Android, and then an Apple, I want to know this. I, there is something, there is something that they have stuck in an Apple phone that it's like it draws you near. And it's very different than an Android. I never had this problem until this Apple phone. And I don't like having an eye life. And I only have a little eye, not a whole capital eye life. However, I never noticed 
this with an Android phone. It's almost like if you've ever eaten Special K before they bioengineered it, now like there was something in it that you could eat a bowl and never get full. So you eat like four bowls and you're like, I'm hungry. And you just ate four bowls. You can't share because you're still hungry. It's still all, it's all, and it's family size. You know, you get at Costco. And so, and, and it's like, there's something there and you know, but you don't know which ingredient because they're all fake. There's something about this. And so what I noticed, and this is just me in my own life that I've noticed this, but maybe you, you have too. But I'm asking people, Android, then Apple people, because the Apple people, it would be a normal thing where it's like, it's just like, like a slow, and you don't really know and you can swipe and swipe and swipe and it can yes it can give you your air your little look at me time but i don't want that i there's something there's something through that and i know that i when i say it, sometimes people look at me like no i know that there's something and so i'm always at this like what is this because my eyes need to be turned away from worthless things whatever on the screen is not worth no this is the this is not worthless this is where we need to be right here but there's like something competing that you know somebody's doing something and there's always a new recipe for me to learn how to cook a new steak <laughs> no 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 somebody just send me the recipe i can print it and move on right so the the rest allows you to be alert to these things but also to see the good around you there's so much good but society it's not their job to tell you that because once you see it then you don't need them and they can't not be needed i mean society really has an inferiority complex they just don't want you to know that but they need you to be just as inferior as they are so they can continue to steal everything from you but god and good is everywhere people are so good when you see that now if you're saying not no they're not well then you need a new circle because the people in my circle oh good people because we don't do bad mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> no so if you don't see good lord turn my eyes Turn my eyes. Now, yes, we know Jesus said none are good. However, when we look at what many are talking about, well, da, 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 mm -mm, because I'm going to choose to be over here and I'm surrounded in the presence of, of God's people. And so we're going forward in the goodness of God because all is good. Okay, so rest allows you to see that because you can breathe and you're not tainted by all the that we talked about last week. Now, the second thing that you can see is that God has a future for you. So, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to read it. I'm in this NIV. I'm just going to camp out here. You all know my love-hate situation with this particular scripture. It's actually not the scripture. It's just the misappropriation of the ones to follow that I find is a bit of a little irritant. But 29, 11. So, check this out. 29, 11. Okay, it tells us this. 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will be found by you. So says the Lord. I will take you from captivity. Okay. You can actually see that there is a future for you. If you're drowning and there's nobody there except the anchor pulling you down, there's no hope. There's no future except death, right? And, and that's not good. So as you can begin to just rest, you can see all the good and know that there is a future for you. That God has not just left you to live in this. Like this without God? Mm -mm. No, you would have, mm-mm. Mm -mm. But you know what? God will strengthen us and he will make the way for us because he's got a great future, which is great because who else is going to have one? The devil. God has a great future and the enemy's got a crappy one. Which one are you going to pick? If you live over here and all this, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse. But as you go here and here and here, it gets better and better and better. Why? Because your better days are yet to come. Some of those seasons are harder than others. However, when you see and you've got a vision and it's written down, you can see where you're going. And it's good because God is good. And there's good. And 
you see how we start to come full circle so we can rest in the goodness of God, knowing that even when it doesn't look to be good or feel to be good or taste to be good, it all is so you can taste and see the beauty and the awesomeness of God. I hope you're getting this, that you can just relish in this with me. Not pickle, but just relish in the fullness of it. Because God is just, he's just good and awesome. And your future is right here. You don't want to not live in the fullness of your future. You want to be moving in it because it is now. Well, when's my future going to start like right now? It is now, honey. It is right here waiting on you to get to it. It's waiting. Don't let it slip by. Get rid of everything that is disallowing you to live. What are those things that have been dormant within you? Oh, dust that off. Dust it all off and get up because it's right here, right now. Now, rest also allows you to see and accept your imperfections. So, I will, I will give it to you straight because I'm not crooked. Now, we're going to go into Psalm 139 because I'm going to show you this. Some of you really need to hear this because I know that you're struggling. And... And it works like this, that there's so much a society that says, you know, and I'll, I'll give you an example of this. And this is, this is no joke. I was, I graduated high school at 17, going, I was second, second semester of college, dating this joker. And I'll call him that. And I remember the day when he said, you know, if you dressed, and he gave all these little supermodels the, you know, well, if you dress, you know, you kind of look like Cynthia Crawford, but if you cut your hair like her, and then if you walked like L, you know, the body L, um, and you wore makeup like her, then you know what? You'd be really attractive. And I said, well, you know what? I have legs and they work. Done. If someone can't see you, then they're not worthy to not see more of you. Do you see what I'm saying? Done. Out. And you know what's crazy? He went on to marry Horseface, which is what we used to call in college, like, like really, like, big. I mean, she was pretty in her own way, you know, she just kind of just looked like a horse. But he married her after he was the one that brought it to my attention. I was like, oh, wow, like that's messed up. You can't call people that. I mean, come on now, you know. But here was the thing, was that he couldn't see. So if somebody doesn't see you, don't let them see more of you. They are not worthy walk it out. You walk out and praise the Lord for the blind that they will stay that way and you keep on moving dear brother, dear sister because it so says in Psalm 139 I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Now I'm in an NIV. Okay, but, but understand and I'll switch it up here just a second. But understand that because if somebody cannot see and they want to they want to take away those things that make you who you are or those little piccadillies or those quirks or those things about you they, they're blind you don't have time to, to to draw it out for them to see and they can't see it hello don't draw it out and then think you're gonna have to go learn braille let me go learn braille to draw you a picture of me so you can see they're blind you are not they are blind. Bye. These people see me. Do you see me? Yes. Hallelujah. So you don't need to waste your time on the blind. But I do love the blind brothers. I love my brothers. But it says here. Let me see what it says here. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works so that my soul knoweth right well. Notice it's the soul and not the spirit. So the soul knows and it's in, in, in agreement with the spirit. So the soul and the spirit are able to see the works of the Lord. You are a great work of the Lord. The, you were created perfect in him, in Christ. All of you is in there is perfect in the way that it is. The enemy will want to tell you those are imperfections. No, those are birth. Those are all oh, that's a birthmark. No, it's a beauty mark. 
landmark. I'll give you an example of this. My, my previous Bible teacher many years ago, they prayed that when their daughter was born that they would know which one she was. Because, you know, they always like take the baby away and then you're like, where are you going with my baby? Bring my baby back. I don't need my baby to be old. Mm -mm. But they knew because her, her ears have the shape of hearts. And, and that's her thing. See, so you were fearfully made. Those things that religion tried to take away from you. Get, get out of the bondage of religion. Religion does more damage to people, especially to women, than ever before. Get rid of it. Get out. You be you. And there's that, what is it they say in Hotlanta? Oh, you do you, boo. You just keep on doing and being you because you are not a Gap commercial. You are created original by God. When you come to a place of rest, look, this is what it is. What do you want? It is what it is. Hang with it or don't. Fall out of the tree, whatever. You know why? Because if you don't, you will spend your life trying to appease people that don't even know who they are, that are not in rest, that can't even get a grip to value you in you. And the more that you try, you will lose your value in yourself trying to appease people with no value that don't even know what it is. They don't even know who they are to know who you are. Mm -mm. When you come to a place of rest, you can rest. You know what? This is what it is. I'm 5'2", whatever. It is what it is. Hello, it just, it's okay. However God made you, you can rest in that. You can rest in, in, in your abilities and your gifts as well as, you know what? Mm, I just will stick with playing checkers. No problem. No problem. Not a thing at all. Society is wanting everyone to conform. And I'm reminded of this. There was the lady that... You know, she just had three, she was granted by an angel of God, three requests. She says, well, I would like longer hair. I would like a smaller waist and a bigger chest. God granted all these things. And then after he did, she got hit by a bus and died. And she got to heaven. And she says, well, God, why am I here so soon? You just granted me these things. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. Many of you are living like that. You don't recognize yourself because society's chipped so much of you away. You got all these, like your lips are like bigger than your face. You know, like, mm. stop. Your lips were good the way they were. Just add, and there's a little trick. You can just add how you can draw that in with lipstick. You don't need to go and, and plump up and mm. you look retarded. Like you don't need to do that. Like all this stuff that they tell you that you need to do, you do not need to do. You just need to accept you because Christ did. Christ accepts you. Society just wants to mess you up so nobody and nothing accepts you. When you come to rest, you can rest that, you know what, this is, I may never be a size two. It's, a, it's perfectly okay. When you come to you and you can accept all of you as Christ accepts all of you, there's such a place of rest that you can just sit down and breathe. Thank you, Lord, that you created all this. Thank you. And you can see it. You can see that as people might make fun of your little nabi nabi knees. Oh, no, these are my knees. They're not nebby. And, and all those funny things that people want to just pick on. Mm-mm. No, because you are not going to be diminishing God any longer. Amen. You don't have the right to look down on God's creation of you. Now, turn with me to Jeremiah. And I pray you're getting something out of this because it's just real. I mean, we're not margarine over here. It's butter. Smooth. Now, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. When you come to rest you can see and you can be in a place of discovering the unknown and you can receive it so if somebody were to say something to you you would be able to receive it because you know the heart of that person when you're in rest and not in rest anything anybody says doesn't come out that way it is an attack it is criticism it's a put down it's not this 
when you come and are in what you can see the discovery of new things whether it's new about you whether it is new within you or where you're going or what God has for you but in Jeremiah 33 3 call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know people in rest aren't very open they're very close-minded very close-minded they can't they can't they can't get beyond and you can't help them because anything you say will be a new argument so even even if you've ever had an argument with a woman anything you say not only will it be used against you it will start a new argument that will be used against you so you should just not say anything and wait for that opportune time if you need more tips on that just stay tuned we'll be getting to that but the discovery of the unknown oh, I didn't know that Wow Lord I pray that you help me not be triggered by what I do not know or understand hmm so when you rest, you're more learnable or teachable might be a better word you're more teachable because you can come and just rest in learning and it's okay if you come ignorant because if you're the smartest one in the circle or in the room you need a new room but a lot of times people don't like that. I remember years ago I dated this guy. <laughs> and he hated, like, it was weird because he's like, I'm surrounded by people that know more than me. And I was like, and that's a bad thing? I mean, I'm like, you're like, what, 40, 41 and your friends are 27. Like, what is this about? I didn't know that, so I figured that out. I was like, that's kind of weird. At least they're not 17. That would be really weird. But I said, but that's a good thing. Because if you're surrounded by this, then, then look at where you're going to go. But if you're, the, if you're the leader of the ignorant, you're going to always stay that way. Like, that's not a good position to, to be in. I couldn't quite get that because there's so much discovery when you move like could you just imagine like being around Solomon now I don't know about the wives I mean that that could be a big cat fight that might last a while although I bet that there's some kind of really cool ones there probably is there would have to be but in in that just imagine just the conversation with Solomon and Queen Sheba I mean, it's astonishing when, when we just want to shut things out. But society want you can't discover anything because you get censored, you know. They even, Dr. Mercola, they even are like shutting him down. Banks, internet, they just, because he knows stuff. I'd like to just be in his presence. Because he knows what I don't know. There's a discovery that can be entering in. You can tell someone's interest by these two things their TV and the size of it and their library and the size of it you can kinda tell where people are in these things you can tell the size of someone's pantry or their closet there's a lot of things you can tell by what people choose to, to purchase but through that discovery what are we discovering? People in rest are able to see that there's so much to, to discover. They become more teachable and acceptable in recognizing their imperfections. And I don't know that. I have no clue. I didn't know that either. And there's not an inferiority complex with that because, because they're settled. There's no pride. Look, I'm just ignorant. I mean, I'm just being real. There's so much that what I don't know that I don't know is so vast. So I have to stay in my lane because otherwise, I mean, I just get run over. <laughs> and so would you. So when you come to rest, you can just accept. I don't, I, now do we need to announce it? No, because even a, even a man is thought wise when he keeps his mouth shut. So the discovery of the unknown, the Lord can always teach us. So how awesome is that, that the Holy Spirit is there to teach us all these great, wonderful things. When you're in rest, it's easier to learn. It's much easier to learn. And I see that with my students when they come to class. I'm like, what's your, what, what's your game? How's your game? Golf. And what, what, why, why is it down? What'd you do? How you do? What, what'd you do last night? 
Well, yeah, how's your family life? I always need to know family life. What's your family life? What is going on at home? Because what is going on at home tells me a lot. You got to get your house in order. If your house isn't in order, well, everything else is not in order. You got to be in order with you to be in order. And then as you're able to look, to get that in order, then we can pay attention. When your house is in order and everything's falling apart and then we go out into the world and the world is falling apart, what else is going to happen? Everything around starts to spiral. You can't really bring anything new in because it's so overwhelming. So as we start to see, okay, we got to get rid of this and this and clean this out and move this and this and this. Now we can peace. Now we can breathe. Now we can be diligent in working on this. So where are we at with this? So now we can be moving in this place of discovery. Turn with me to Galatians 5.22. You can also be moving in a place. Oh, wrong way. 5.22. where 522 where you are able to see what you can control isn't it funny how people always want to control everything about everything else and their own lives are out of control you ever notice that i like listen when you a when when you have your act together then you can come over here but i don't want your your confusion that you choose to live in to taint my stillness <laughs> no i worked too hard to get to this place don't come and mess it up i'll give you an example of this when you have things right where you want them to be, there was a time in a season, this was a specific place where I left my keys, right inside the door on the floor between two pairs of shoes. Why? Because then I wouldn't put anything over them. I knew right where they were. But inevitably, somebody would come into my home and see them and start moving them around. Since when do you go into people's houses and start rearranging their stuff? Who does that? Tell me, is that a norm? Is that like a thing in society where we expect everybody to living by, by what we have without even knowing the why? Because I put it there for a reason. And then if anybody ever came in and they would never find them. However, now you sleep with them by your bed and if you got the key fab, then if anybody ever move, tries to break in your house, you just hit that in the alarm and then they run. So you don't have to shoot them. But... That was a weird thing. So I started looking at this, that I started noticing the pattern that people were trying to control everyone else, but they are not in control. When you come to a place of rest, you can control what you control. And the rest is not your control, which means you don't have to lose sleep or lose rest over it. Because you're good. God will deal with them. You know, but they're preaching this. Okay, and why you listen to it? Well, yep. How do you feel after that? Well, I'm, yep. Five twenty-two. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whatever is out of your control is not your business. Leave it alone. Back out. You can't control it, so why are you getting involved? Trying to change this, and that's not even your business. Like It's astonishing, right? But everybody's wanting to do this and do that and have an opinion and go and get involved. And, da, 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 da. and then they're all mad because nobody doesn't like this. And the, Yeah, because it has nothing to do with you. Well, God's not doing this, and God needs to do this. Really? You think you're going to be the one to go tell God what God needs to do? You think that God's one blind, and God's going to listen to you when your focus is not even on Him? Hello, we want to run everyone else's business, not even know where we're at with God or where we even are at all. And then, oh, no wonder why you don't have rest. Come on, dear brother, dear sister, just sit down and chill. Just sit down and chill. God will deal with it. I used to try running my mom and I used to get very bothered because I had to take care of my mom. I only met her five times in my entire life and now I have full custody of her. And they don't play in Texas, by the way. You don't, they call adult protective services on you and force you to tell. I'm like, I don't even know her. I don't know where she's been for 30 years and now you want me to, what? I didn't have a lot of rest in this whole situation. But I had to surrender it because I couldn't control it. I couldn't control her. 
I could only control me. And as I started getting in that place, Lord, help, because I had no beat, Lord. I'm just dying over here. I'm just dying. Wanting everything and everybody to operate the way that I believe that they should. Oh, just a bunch of little, a little, a whole little Julie on me over here. If, they're doo -doo 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 -doo. if everybody does exactly as I say, when I say how we say, then it'll all go well. And then I'd probably be mad because there are a bunch of little Julie Nazis running around. But everybody would be mad. I don't need that. I need to be able to celebrate God's creation and see that God created her the way that he did. And she was, she was hysterical. But I couldn't see it till I got to a place of rest. Then I, could, then I got it. You can't get it when you're in restless. There's not a lot you can get in restlessness except stress and more, re more restlessness. I mean, it sounds really kind of funny, right? That, that we look in this way and, and our focus is on everything, ever, running around, being busy, body, meddling, fix your spirit. I could do that, da, 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 da. Fix your own self. Fix your own self. Oh, she's so fat. Yes, as a fatter person. Okay, come on now. Really? Kettle? Like, uh, take the plank out of your eye because you can't see. You're like blind over here calling out. Every, like, Really? Do we not see this? But when you come to a place of rest, you can say, you know, all 200 pounds of me at rest and I'm good. I don't have to count calories like you little skinny people over there. I'm at peace. While everyone else is, is restless, judging the people that are at rest. Like, do you see this? I mean, it's kind of ironic. All the restless people looking at what the people in rest should or shouldn't be doing, but you're not doing this. Like, do we... Like, just stay in your lane. Focus on what you can control. What comes in your mouth, what goes out your mouth, and where you are going with the Lord. God will take care of the rest. God knows. God sees. Nothing but a thing. God's made the way. Becomes very, very simple. And you're able to see it when you can come in that place. What it really is, is it's putting down your own pride and your own arrogance to recognize that God, God is very capable. And if he needs your input about that pastor that you think you're going to go blast, God will ask for it. But I'm quite confident that God will deal with them. And you can deal with you with God. I mean, it's really that simple. We just have to see it. When you see it and you rest in it, you can now see, okay, love, peace, joy, forbearance, or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control, not people control. Well, you know, they're not doing what I think yet, and what do you think? Well, I don't know. How do you know then they're not doing what you think? Hello? What do you think? Think on these things, so says the word. The word. Think on this. Think on what is pure, what is holy, what is this. As a man thinketh, so he is. As you move away from the clutter and the toxicity of society and you focus on where you are, you'll find that people are people doing what people do, which is they don't know. The nature of people, whether or not they're Christian or Jubu, whether they are whatever they are, is irrelevant. People are people period you can come to a place of rest to recognize that it's okay turn with me to ecclesiastes actually proverbs i'm going to go to proverbs for 16 32 this is probably one that's a challenging one but we're going to we're going to get there ecclesiastes or proverbs 29:11 29.11, and it reads this. That's not the one I want. I want 16. Even though that's a good one, I want 16. 16.32. Better a person, better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control, than one who takes a city. When you move in the Spirit, and you walk in the fruit of the Spirit, and you are aware, uh, well aware of what you can control and what you can't, and your emotions can rest, and they got to deal with them. Now you've got it. See, 
I don't get bothered when someone else gets angry. I get bothered when I do. Because that's telling me there's something I need to deal with. Lord, what's up with me? People can act a fool, because they will and they do and they are. Not my issue. It's where they are. When I get that way, what's going on with my emotions? What did I eat? What did I not eat? How is my love walk? Did I spend enough time in, with the spirit? Am I, what am I doing that's causing this? I need to be in check. When you are in a place of rest and you can see those things and pay attention, that if you're flying off the handle, that's in you. Now you can start to recognize where it's at. And you may go through the ebbs and the flows of the seasons of that. And when you come to the conclusion of what that is, then you can start to begin to either get healing or, or have it revealed or do whatever it needs to be done to release it, to be moving in a place where you're going forward with the Lord and you can see it. A lot of people that are, that are not in rest are out of control. They're out of control and they don't even know. They're just triggered by everything. Everything is a trigger and they just walk and live like it. Now we're in Ecclesiastes 11, chapter 10. So then banish anxiety from your heart. Cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigor are meaningless. Now just move forward. You're good. You're good. See, when you can come to accept the things I cannot accept, you know the prayer of serenity. Lord, help me to accept the things I cannot accept, move in the way that I can't, that I can move. I walk the way I walk. I talk the way I talk. Thank you, Lord. You love me. And and I'll, I'll give you an example of, of this, kind of a funny one. But when I was in college, I speak with my hands. My professor downgraded me for doing that. Oh, yes. I got points taken off. I got an A minus instead of an A. My very next speech, I talked about hand gestures in the Brazilian culture, in the Italian culture, how the Greeks use their hands, and what it all means. Now, a little cheeky, but when you start to take away these things, you start to move out of rest when we can accept this is what it is. Now they go, mm, we're not doing that. Both they're used to accentuate. So with my speech coaching clients, many, they come to the table like I told to put my hands in my pocket. Yeah, but you look funny like you're trying to do something that you ought not do because they don't know what to do with their hands. Use your hands, be natural, be who you are. And there's rest in celebrating that. Every little bit of these things tell a story. And as your emotions are there and you say, okay, I don't need to be focusing on this, that, or that, or this. This is who it is. What's he work, right? What you see is what you get. It's great. Move in that. Rest in that. Get your emotions in check. What's causing me to be out of balance? Is it this? Is it that? What is happening? If society is doing it, put yourself in a timeout so you can rest and hear from God. Because if you're not, you won't have any. You won't have any rest and you won't hear from God. And that's the plot of the society. Mess up your pineal gland so that everything, all the receptors of everything within your body is all messed up so that you never hear anything from God. Mm-mm. mm 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 Move in that way and guess what happens? You'll be able to see your emotions are in check, but then also the simplicity of everything. That, that you can just be. And it becomes simple because you you and you can celebrate you not a fragmented version of you that you don't know which one of you is being celebrated or what demons within each one of you and all these altars that are in you no you come to the table with you in rest and you can see you know what thank you lord thank you that i'm right where i need to be with you thank you lord hallelujah that it's so simple but nothing in society is simple, and they don't want you to really know that it is. I mean, they want to hide that from you. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 3.16. 3.16 is 2 Thessalonians. This next point is that you're able to see the simplicity of things, simplicity in the enjoyment and conversation. You can be in the greatest of places 
and with the wrong person and it's terrible i was in paris with the wrong person oh that was terrible i've been in i've been in australia oh that was that particular business meeting that was that particular that it was terrible it was a, you could be in the wrong in the right place with the wrong people and that's the chair so so here it says in 16 now may the peace of the lord himself give you peace at all times and in every way the lord be with all of you it's simple it's so simple it's just simple and it's beautiful and when you can just relish in these things of the simplicity and you can just okay so the kids clothes are dirty they got dirty I mean, you know, we grew up and we had clothes that, you know, you were school clothes and you come home and you change and then you have your play clothes. Okay. You know, we, we recognize all these things that are the patterns of life. But in all these things, you know, we fuss and we fret about this and this and this. And you got a bunch of Marthas running around. And Mary's just like, well, I'm just going to chill and seek the better thing. I mean, heck, last week's message, the lights went out. Okay. And it's okay if it's not all perfect. It is all okay because he still makes the way in the simplicity of who he is. Everything in society tries to distort that. But when you see the simple pleasures of everything there, you can begin to see and live in a different way. And it's good and easy and life becomes not what you made it to be don't be so hard on yourself well you know what i didn't read 40 scriptures i didn't read 40 chapter to, chapters today i did not pray in tongues four times a day and i did not do my devotional okay did you go did you go on your walk and talk to the lord yep beautiful did you talk to God on your way on your way to work? Yes. Are your kids fed? Yes. Do you have a roof over your head? Yes. Do you have a Bible? Yes. Does the Lord love you? Yes. Okay, so what's your problem? I mean, I remember I remember my pastor read and my, my pastor, let me just say, he's got such a sly way of just of just setting me straight. I I love it. And, and I was going through this hard time. I'm like, well, Lord, what am I going to record? You know, I, I mean, there's not a lot of walls. We're dealing with all kinds of stuff here in the ministry. And, and there's a lot of needs. And I'm not a light expert. And, and Lord, we need this. And I mean, and, and so I'm telling my pastor this. He says, you know what I hear? I said, tell me. He's like, I just hear a lot of complaining. I was like, before you speak anything more, Father, I'm sorry for my complaining that I can't see what it is that's right in front of me. You know, we complain about what we don't have and then we get it and we complain that we didn't get it in the right way and then it's not exactly what we want. Sometimes we, there's one thing to want something and then it's another thing to want it when you have it. Some of you were saying, yeah, I got what I wanted. You get what you want you just wanted all the wrong things. But when you look around at what you have and you can be thankful of what you have, you see the goodness of it. And you can rest to see how much you really are loved and how much you really cherish and how much good that there really is as we come full circle. So it becomes really simple. I mean, people ask me all the time, what is it that you want? Don't you want to go da 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 da? I'm good. Three things. Because through, the, through those things is where the wellspring of life is, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God. Now, in this earthly realm, sure, it's still three things. Pretty simple. You know, but we fuss a lot. For what? Because someone else walked by you stinky? Like, who cares? That's them. Praise God, you don't stink. Hand them some soap. Whatever. Start carrying soap. You stink. Here you go. God bless you. Maybe we might need to do that. We're going gonna to start smelling the fragrance of life. <laughs> Just hand people soap. I mean, you know what? People need it. Why not? Now, turn with me to Proverbs 13. We're just going to, I'm almost done. Just giving you this straight here tonight. Proverbs 13, 20. You'll notice when you're, that you can see your conversation and the depth and the breadth of them. People that are in rest are living in such a, such a way that it that that the, their lifestyle breeds itself this is different than a hustle lifestyle because you can still be at peace and drive 90 right and you can be you can be in peace and drive 25 or 
uh, go 25 and not have peace. So you can move through the pace of life and still be in peace and joy and contentment <coughs> and rest at all time. But in, in Proverbs 13, 10 or 20, 13, 20, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. When you're in rest and peace, you can just enjoy the conversations. The conversations are good. When you're around a people in, in rest, it's good. We can talk about the days to come. We can sit relish like the Proverbs 30. I seem to be using this word today, third, third time on this. Just go with it. That we can just sit down and we can be in the deliciousness of, of, of the conversation at hand. Like the Proverbs 31 woman that could laugh at the days to come. That you know these things are coming, but just because you know it's coming doesn't mean that it consumes you. That yes, you're prepared for it. It's no different. Okay, I'm going to brush my teeth today. Yes. Do we need to have a conversation about it? Well, you know, I brushed this one for 35 seconds and this one here and this one here. And, mm, it's good. See, we're moving in a different way. We can just come to the table in the sense of peace of where we are and whose we are and how we are because he made the way so our conversation and the dynamic is transformed it's not so heavy many people that i've been around that are restless every single conversation is filled with some element of it that is just breeds more of it and once you start talking and i know i'm like a wind up and and i've been reminded look it's not an auction well you know sometimes it might be. <laughs> but we go with it. It is what it is. You start to see, okay, I can rest in that. And we're going to have some good fellowship. And we're just going to rest in the Lord that God's got this. You know, we enter into the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, that you've got this, that I've done my part. I, I'll do my best and you do the rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for what it is. Thank you, Lord. You see, we make so much out of so much or make so much out of so little. Well, we don't have this. We don't have that. No, what do you have? What do you have? Your rest is inward out, not outward in. And if you're looking for something outward to make give you rest, it won't. You're going to move to another place and you're still going to be just as restful. You know why? Because you complained here and you had an itch that brought you a stitch to, and, and then you just turned into a witch with a bed. And, and then you're going to move there and you're just, you're just going to be magnified in what you are. But as you deal with you right where you are, then you can go anywhere and be at peace and rest. Now, the people around you may not be at that place, and that's okay. You just find the people to be around. Your conversations will change, and you can talk about greater things, ideas and not, and not the things that strip away. You can always tell small people talk about others, but big people talk about ideas and the future. What are you talking about? What are your conversations? Are they life or are they death? Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you doing? Do you even ask people that anymore? How are you? I want to know that. If you are still listening to this, I want to know how are you? You know why? Because I found people don't, don't ask that enough. They don't ask me. I mean, I tell you, I went through a season. I mean, I went, I will tell you this. You need to hug someone. And I will tell you this. I had up until a week ago, three and a half hugs in the last year. Three by the same person and one by someone else. That's it. Surprising. Sad. I talk to people all day, every day. But when I started really looking at that... It was incredible. Two hugs yesterday from someone I was meeting for the first time. Actually, three hugs. I mean, it was beautiful. Got three hugs in, in, in a two-hour period, more so than what I had in almost an entire year. Because we're not, we're, we're living so distant. Conversations are distant. Relationships are distant. We're distant from ourselves, distant from God. Not even aware how people are because we're not even aware how we are. We have no awareness just going through. 
I mean, the studies continue to find that women touch their dogs more than their husbands. Now, that's a funny thing in some ways because there's a reason why you like, why, why, why you like your dog so much. Now, I love my dog, but let me just say... Um, <laughs> I just won't even, I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, it's kind of funny, but yeah, so in the middle, like, my wife, and she, like, she touches the dog more. Well, you know, be nice to your wife, maybe she'll touch you. But if you're only touching her for so she can touch you because you have one agenda, she's not going to want to touch you. You might want to hug, but then even then she doesn't want to hug because your hug is not a hug. So she's going to touch the dog because the dog's just going to give her a little kiss and tell her you love me. So when we when I share this with him, share this with you because how are you? How are you? Why? Because I care. Because that conversation needs to be had. We don't have that conversation anymore. It's always about nonsense. And I'm not into nonsense. I don't give a rip. I don't care. Who's stealing what? I don't care that Barbie came out. Because let me tell you, the divorce Barbie's coming out in September. And she comes with all of Ken's stuff. Great. Do we need to have a conversation about that? And that's a... I want to know how you are. But everybody's talking about non... Like, oh, did you hear... No, I didn't. But I did hear that Jesus loves you. And I did hear that he cares about your future. We got to get away and go back. Actually, we don't need to go back. We need to come to a present time that we care and that we ask, how are you? Because we're missing people. And whether we like it or not, people are dying at a faster pace. And you don't ever want to have any of those people before you just be gone suddenly and you didn't, you didn't even ask how they were or no. We need to start paying more attention to others than we do our TikTok or how we want to talk about ourselves. Mm -mm. You can be surrounded by people and they're all dying. Do you know? So the conversation tells much. How do you see a conversation? I'm going to continue to be repeating this. It seems to be a thing that the Lord's got in front of me. That, that we need to see and pay attention with our eyes. 93% of communication is nonverbal. I teach nonverbal communication and pay attention to it. So it's kind of fun to watch people's nonverbal communication. You can always tell where someone's interest is. Their belly button, by the way, the belly button will always direct where someone's going and their level of interest. So if you ever see two people at a coffee shop or in a bar, follow the belly button. Where the knees and the feet and the belly button go, that's your level of interest. So you see two people in a bar sitting next to one another, they got wedding rings on, they're turned to each other, mm, pay attention to that. They meet for the first time, that's a funny one. Watch people that just that are dating online and see for the first time. Watch those conversations, a little bit awkward, some of the little funny things that the blink rate starts to change. When they don't like each other, they start to look around, look outward. You'll see so much when you get away from, from the other things that are causing you to be rest. And when you can just drop in and just settle in and rest in that and you can see how blessed you are, you move in a different way, such a different way, that, that time still moves, but everything isn't on a timetable of this and this and this and this. Not everything needs to be by your calendar, like it's okay to flow. Dinner will get done. Doesn't it always? I mean, I have friends that operate on that time, that they've got the whole map of everything minute two. I brush my teeth for two minutes. And this now, they work in efficiency, so that might be expected. But it takes me 35 seconds to get dressed. I'm like, how many hours does it take to figure out what to wear? You can get dressed in that time, but what's the time before that? Mm. They, then they stress, and then there's no rut. Just rest. Have great conversations. Have great fellowship. It's okay, just put the chicken on the table. Pull out, pull out the fine china. Do it now while you, while you can. Because life is so short and you don't know. Well, we can only do it this day, why? In my house, the king is the king. That's just how that'll work. I mean, that's just, that's just how it should be. He's worthy of all things. I don't need to pull out the fine china on Thanksgiving or whatever other day. No, it's every day. This is how this is. It's worthy of it. 
worthy of honor. When we're in rest, we can see the value of those things and treasure them. My final point is in Romans 12:2. we We're going to take some time. We've got to get our minds in order because nothing will happen if we don't start thinking right. You're not in rest because the thoughts that you think. And if you're eating the food that's messing with your thoughts, and then you're going to be da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So the stress levels can start to be removed and, and be, be moving in a different way. How do we know this? Because we can see here, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But it's then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you are restless... You're not hearing from God. What are you doing? You don't even know. You're just going to and fro and fro and to. Where are you going? You're in a rush running around in all your ignorance. Where are you going? Your stress level is high. Cortisol levels are high. You're just one, you're just, you're just one subway stop from, from combustion. And everyone else knows it, but you are the one that doesn't see it. And then you got cholesterol problems and heart problems and palpitations. And it's not even worth it. Over what? Over what? When you come to a place of rest, you can see... You can just see society is, is like one big boil ready to just burst and all that nastiness would be ready to come out. But as you come to a place of rest, your stress levels go down. And when you get there, we've talked about this in previous messages, that when you get there, what happens when you're there? But now it's what you can see and what you can turn your attention to. When you turn your attention to this, now you can be in fellowship, true fellowship that is great you can learn things because your mind's open and you're able to receive it's really simple that we can just we can just be in this and it's and it's great and we can be mary and not martha and we can just we can just laugh and enjoy each other's company and we can we can just be moving in a place where god is so good and you know what i'm not perfect it's okay. We don't have to strive to look like this because even they, they don't look like it. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Britney Spears at, at Cellulite. I think everybody cheered. She's got snakes all over her body. And, and even then, according to the, to the American Medical Association, like she was obese. She's still pulling it off. Shave her head. She's still keeping it real, moving along, trying to find the chip. But you know what? She's moving along. And, and it is what it is, imperfections. Okay, so cellulite. Okay, well, judge me. Okay. Whatever. You see, but people can't move in that place. When you get to that, you see the good because even though they can't, you can. They're not there, but you are, and you can rest in that. Okay, they'll get there. They're just like little puppies. They'll get there. I used to have to help Olive up the stairs. And the one time when she got stuck, like she got, was trying to get from one little stair to the other. And then she got a little scared. So I just rub her little belly and just pick her up and put her there. And then she's able to go again. We're all like that in our own way. And God still loves us. And so I pray that as you are going forward, that you can move in a way that, that it's all good. And, and that you see the good around you that you are able to just walk into your future and and accept yourself as Christ has accepted you. How is it that you could allow Him to accept you and then you not accept you? That's not even normal or right or something we should accept. No, 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 and no. So as you move, you say, thank you, Lord, for accepting me. Teach me, Holy Spirit, how to accept me so I can walk in this. So I can then accept others right where they are because that's what Christ did. Woman at the well. How many, how many men have you had? Mm. Pray you receive this today. I'm going to get out of your hair for now because I gave you a lot to chew on and reflect upon and just enjoy and rejoice in. But know right where you are that it's okay to just chill in whatever way that means. Enjoy a good book. Enjoy whatever it is that is before you. And just thank God for the present. Be presently mindful and mindfully present. It's where we are for tonight. I pray you enjoy your weekend or your week or wherever you are with whatever you're doing. But let's pray. Father, tonight I thank you. I thank you for rest. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your fellowship. I thank you, Father, for eyes to see 
the first we see we need to get to rest because we recognize that there's a place for us to get to that we can't get to a place that we don't know exists we thank you for making the way for us to get there that we're here that we can arrive here in this place and be in this place and live in this place and rest in this rest place of rest father we thank you for the simplicity of it all that you're surrounding us with your grace and your presence that in all these things father on the sabbath we can just rest in you that you are the great god that we serve father help us to just be in this place with you that as we go forward father that that what other people don't see we thank you we don't have to force them to see it that we don't need to draw a bigger picture or scream it louder we thank you father that we just move on and it's good because you've accepted us so father we come before you and we honor you and we thank you and I thank you, Father, for my brothers and sisters. May they see the awesomeness of you within them. That all those things, Father, that they've never seen, let them be celebrated. And we thank you today for moving in our lives today, right where we are, as we go forth with you. We praise you, Father, and we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I pray that this has blessed you, that as you go forward, you just thank the Lord, because he's so worthy, and he created you. So thank him. You know, we do pray every single day. Every day we pray. Body of believers that come together. And it's such an honor. And, and it's just, I look forward to it every day. And so I invite you to join us wherever you are. You can join us. Go to julieblairministries.org. You'll see it there. The daily prayer. There's the number. And you see the country code. There's a list of country codes. If your country code does not work, there should also be a link. And you just click it by computer. And, and the link probably works on your phone. And I think you could probably download the app and, and listen there. I think, I don't know, many of you are more high tech than, than, than I am. I just click the button and, and dial. <laughs> it works, we'll go with it. And so I just invite you to join us. We pray, we testify, and we do life together. Many of us have never even met. But we talk every day and we've done life we've been together through breakups and marriages and we've been together it through death and through court cases and through trials and tears and laughter and it's i believe how how christ was on the earth when he walked and so you visit just visit julieblaministries.org there's a lot more about that and so you can just dial the number you'll hear the show far you'll be greeted and then and then we pray you can also see a lot more about what the mandate is that we're working on and working to that God has called has called this ministry to. And if you do have a prayer request, I want you to just share that. And also, if you'd be so kind to click that button, make, make certain that you receive these messages. I know that there was a season that every day there was a message, and yes, there was 40 days of 40 messages, and we got through that, praise God. And so, so there's a lot that I know you can go back and listen to, but God is making the way. And there'll be many, many more to come, so praise God. You don't want to miss those because it's a lot, it's a lot that, that God wants you to have. And so enjoy what God has for you, and if you feel that, that the Lord is telling you to give, give, which I'm sure that he would be because God wants us to give, but give where you're getting fed. We'll just leave it at that. Give where you're getting fed and you already know what to do because I'm going to believe that you know you need to give. It settles it. God tells us, be a cheerful giver. Give where you're giving, where you're getting fed. Rejoice in what God is doing in your life. Have an absolutely awesome night. Get your Bible out. Stay salty. I love you guys and I look forward to sharing the next message. Be still and know that God is with you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.